Can you make a thing with this thing? Today on CSB Unpasteurized. So a question that comes up all the time. Somebody will say like, oh, can I use this thing to make a mead? Can I use this thing to make a wine? Can I use this thing? And the short answer is... Maybe? Probably. Perhaps. It really depends on what the thing is. So It also depends on what your definition of the said thing is. Right. Like, people will ask, can I use maple syrup to make a mead? Well... There's more to that question because, yes, you can, but you can't use only maple syrup to make mead. You have to mix it with honey in order to make mead. But now it's called an acerglin, even though it's still actually a mead. And I know some people are going to be uh, upset with us because we we make variations on the theme of all of the brews here. And we've, we've tried to explain this in a way that we thought was easy to understand, but we know there's some diehards out there that are just like, no, sir, yeah. you are incorrect. And I can appreciate that ideology, but we can't name it Steve. I mean, we could, but no one would know what we were talking about. And that that's why we have naming conventions. I didn't really want this to turn into a naming convention episode, but, but it sounds like it's we're part kinda, of it. It's part it of it. It kind of is, yeah. So uh, for us, a mead is something that has at least 50% of the fermentable sugars as honey. Yeah. So if you take out the honey, then to us, it's not a mead anymore. Right. Right. Does that it, mean it's a bad thing? No, no it just means it just, it's not a mead. Right. And that's the thing. Like A lot of people seem to take that as, that's a negative. Well, no, it just means it's not mead. You can't make mead without honey. It's just that simple. Other people have said, if you add anything to the honey and water that it's no longer mead that i kind of have a little bit of an issue with it's just a different kind of mead there is a full cornucopia oh my god there's so many types of things that you can add to honey and it's still considered a mead right and it's not our definition the definitions are already out there right otherwise there wouldn't be melomels there wouldn't be uh capsicamels there wouldn't be acerglins Acer there wouldn't be all of Pimans. these things there's so many that their name it means that honey plus some other thing. Right. And the thing we have to realize, too, is mead has been made for thousands of years. This is not a new thing. This is not a new nomenclature. And it wasn't always called mead. Many people just called it wine. Or they didn't even have a name for it. Or they just called it whatever they wanted to. Sure. Lots of people, when they hear the word mead, they automatically think Vikings. Mm -hmm. And... This is the truth about fermented honey beverages. Basically, anywhere a human could get their hands on honey, they yeah. were fermenting that and drinking everywhere. it. Everywhere. Everywhere around the world they were making it. Right. North, south, east, west, doesn't matter. Yep. So they all had their own names because and they were in different locations. Something else really important when we talk about Vikings is they probably drank more beer than they did mead because honey was expensive. So... It's it's a common trope that everybody believes, but in reality, they probably drank a lot more beer. It's cheaper. <clears throat> anyway. lots, of, lots of the ancient peoples, regardless of where they were located, were using what was available to them yes. and creating something, more often than not, for preservation, yeah. not for the alcoholic properties. Like, I really... That was just like a bonus. Yeah, I really doubt they would say, oh no, I can't put these... This fruit into my honey wine because then it won't be mead anymore. They I don't didn't think care. they did that. They I think like, they used what they used. That fruit is getting kind of funky. Let's throw it in the vat and that way it'll still be edible. Or that mead tastes awful. Let's add some fruit to it to make it taste better. <laughs> or spices or yeah, so herbs. That's or whatever. where a lot of the things that we do today came from is that kind of idea. Now, something else that comes up about this is people that want to change a mead into a wine or something like that. And that's totally cool. I'm all for it. Now, before we get to that, though, I want to talk about some of the things that people have asked. Can I make a wine or a mead with this thing? And some of those things are like date syrup. We've actually done that. Sorghum. Syrup, which that is pretty much like a cane syrup or a date syrup kind of thing. It's not exactly those, obviously. It's made from sorghum, but it is a sweet syrup that, yes, it will ferment. You can totally use that. I do not know its measurements, and I don't know if it's regulated as well as, say, you know, honey is to know exactly what the measurements would be from batch to batch. Is that something you want me to add to the list? Sorghum? Yeah. Uh, we've been asked a couple times. I wouldn't mind making a sorghum something. All right, I'm going to add it to the list. Mentally add it to the list right now. When I find the list to add it to, I think yeah. it's, my device is that way. 
It's it's literally over there. Um, so that's one of the things. But then I'll get people that'll say, oh, can I make uh, wine with cane sugar or cane syrup or treacle or things like that? Of course you can. They're all going to be a little bit different for the actual like specific gravities that you get out of them. But if you do it properly, measure as you go, you should be able to do it. No problem. They're all fermentable. Then we get into things like, can I make it with stevia? Can I make a wine with erythritol? Can I make a wine with monk fruit? Now, you can sweeten them with these things, but you can't actually ferment them. They don't make alcohol. They're not fermentable. Yeast cannot break them down into alcohol and CO2. So while non-fermentables like that, erythritol, allulose, stevia, uh, sucralose, monk fruit, there's, there's a lot. Okay, yeah. there's, there's yeah. a lot. Those things are great for flavoring or sweetening not so much stevia. Don't really use stevia. It makes like a weird taste. Now, I believe I have a list of fermentable and non-fermentable sugars. That's all the things that can ferment on our website. So please check us out at city-studying.com yep. for more information. It will be in the posts or blog section. Um, and I will look for that future Jerrica and put it in the link in the description below but we try to have all this information out there for you but one of the things that we haven't talked about that I really want to stress right now that I have the opportunity is that whenever you make a change to any of our recipes your final product is going to be different than ours now that sounds like common sense but I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote Derica, comma, however, it is different. Um, we have had people literally ask, can I use this fruit instead of that fruit? And will it be the same? Well, no. No, it won't be the same. But you can can't I use, use it. Can I use sugar instead of honey in this mead? And will it be the same? No. No. But it'll still ferment and still make a thing. Sure. And that that's where, you know, this idea comes from is... It's not like you can just throw a bunch of stuff into a fermenter and it's going to come out the same every time. Different fruits, different sugars, different fermentables make different things. It's just the way it is. And it's not even a name convention. It's they come out different. Right. And I think that this comes from people who are used to cooking and substituting different ingredients to create a similar thing. Now but it's still different. It's still different. It's still different. There's, there's slight nuances. Comma, however. Oh, see, I did it anyway. When you're doing it, in the brewing, there's there's more science. Think, yeah, there's some chemistry think involved sometimes. Cooking versus baking, yeah, would be Good cooking analogy. versus brewing, right? So there's there's going to be more differences when you start subbing out different ingredients. Oh yeah, they're going to affect a broader spectrum of just. So it's not just going to be I'm replacing one sweetener from another. No, they're going to react different in the fermentation process. And so this is a really important information for you. So can you do it? Yes. Will it be the same? No. Now, something that comes up often is honey's expensive. We know. Absolutely. How can I turn this mead into a wine or vice versa? Can I make this wine into a mead? Now, before we talk about that, let's let's talk about what we're drinking today, Derica. What are you what are you drinking? I am drinking our pina colada mead. It is delightful. It is a beautiful color and beautifully clear, and I am super happy about it. And it's it's uh, about nine months old, right? It's I'm, I'm see the bottle right there. Fourteen point five percent and one point zero two zero plus fortification. Yeah, we fortify because, that. Because yeah. And I happen to be drinking something um, interesting and different and unique. It's a Pan Galactic Gargle Blaster. It is. And if you haven't seen that video, I don't remember right off the this hand. This comes out after it. it That's the only after, reason okay. why I'm mentioning it. Otherwise, I would not have said anything. But we, this comes out after. We were like, is this? I'm actually kind of envious that I'm drinking this and not that. The because only there, there's there's a note in there that I don't like. I say it in the video. I'm not going to talk about it now. But I but know. Otherwise, it's pretty good. I appreciate the pina colada more than Brian does. That's yeah, why probably. I'm drinking the pina colada. If if it, if I was drinking something that he would appreciate, then we would have swapped, and I would have totally been drinking that. But I am starting to feel like I got hit about the head with a lemon wrapped around a gold brick. In a good way. That's why the Pan Galactic Gargle Blaster is the number one cocktail in the universe. It's the best drink in the universe, according to Zephod. Anyway, if you wanted to convert a mead to a wine or a wine to a mead, at its simplest, now, I just want you to understand that there's a lot more complexity to it than that. Um, a sugar wash is a lot different than a honey fermenting. They're completely different 
compounds being formed. There's different requirements for them. So at its simplest, yes, you can make the substitution, but you might end up having to make more flavor adjustments over time, okay? Because a honey is going to give a lot of flavor where sugar just adds alcohol, yep. really. So yep. there's a lot of difference there. So if you're converting a wine to a mead, you're probably going to end up with a much more flavorful brew than you would if you're going from a mead to a wine. Not always, but that is a thing. Now... To help you out in this endeavor, we actually have quite a few recipes that we've made in the wine category yep. and in the mead category. So you can simply go to our channel, City Steading Brews, and search our channel specifically for different recipes. And you will find, oh, they made... I can't think off the top yeah. of my head which ones, but I know there's a bunch of them where well, we've made both in the wine and the mead. And you can see the differences true. between the two. Times. Yeah. And you can you can use that as a guide to help you in something that we haven't converted from wine to meat or meat to wine. Uh, Rascal decided to say hello. Hi, bud. So this is our film day for brews. And so we've done a lot of work before we get into here. And the cats have to be quarantined during yeah. that because cats and brewing equipment yeah, is during these, we bad. But because we're just basically speaking... To you, our audience, who we cherish, we, we allow our cats, who we also cherish, to roam freely. Freely. Now, I want to give just a rough guide on how you can convert a mead to a wine and vice versa. Okay? If you see a mead recipe and you would prefer it to be a wine, all you have to do is substitute sugar for the honey, but not in equal amounts. You're going to use about three-fourths of the amount of sugar as you would Honey, because honey is 0 0.035 points per pound in a gallon, and sugar is about 46, 0 0.046 per pound in a gallon. So it's about a three quarters of the amount of sugar to honey, about. That said, take reading. many times take people reading. ask us questions. Yeah, and he could, just, he could just keep saying that as I'm speaking, and take it's completely appropriate. Um, it's not rude at all. And some of you are like... <laughs> You're talking over him or he's talking over you. We talk over each okay. other. <laughs> if you just survive in our house for like two seconds, you realize this is how we communicate. Yes. This At is least a, we communicate. This is our way. Um, mm. Conversely. But I wasn't I wasn't done. I'm so, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I wasn't um, done and you interrupted my end. I done. interrupted I'm you not, and when I'm done. You're not done, so it's okay. When I'm done, then you can go back and, yep. and we're all good. It's fine. As long as my train of thought does not I'm leave the building, which it may have, because I'm trying to remember what I was talking about. Wow. It's it's so good and so bad in so many ways. Yeah. Make that drink. Drink it. Enjoy it with your friends. Um, okay. So we were talking about, help me out here. Get me back on the, on the rails. I don't even know anymore. The Pan Galactic Gargle Blaster is okay. done and again. Well, I was talking about how to convert a mead to a wine, and I was going to talk about how to convert a wine to a mead. That was where I was yep. going. I have no idea what I was going to say. Yeah, so let's do it that. It was important. So if you had white sugar and you were going to convert that to honey, uh, honey needs a little bit more. So you need like 1.25 the amount of honey to sugar. Um, that's That was that was all I needed to say. Now all right, I remember. I remember. Woohoo! If we have made a recipe in a wine and we haven't made it in a mead, please check first. Mm -hmm before asking us, because that's going to save not only us time, but you time as well. So if we haven't converted our wine to a mead, then you can ask in the comments, I love this recipe, yeah. I just want to make it a mead. And that is an easier conversion for Brian to do for you. Or we might to make a video on a it. A whole brand new recipe. Now, if you want a whole brand new recipe that we haven't even done ever, 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 Simply say, hey, I'm really interested in these things. Could you please make this in the future? And I will add it to the list, which is like hundreds deep by now. Yeah. And we try to get to it. And like each time we review and we do our meetings, we're like, oh, we, we did that. Yay. And we're so happy because that means we we have satisfied somebody's request. Mm -hmm. I started to say it. I want to put a little more fine point on it. If you... Take our mead recipe and convert it to a wine. You may find it lacking. You might need to augment it with extra tannin or extra fruit or extra spices or extra acids because the honey 
flavor really does add a lot to it. And conversely, if you take a wine and make it into a mead, you may find you can back off on some of the things that might have been done, tannins and acids right. and things like that. Because remember, honey is acidic, sugar is not. Right. So that there's a change. It's it's not a one-to-one changeover when you go honey to sugar, even with the amount different. It's not the same, okay? That... You can do it, but it's not the same. And that's something I just wanted to get clear that while you can substitute and you can put sorghum syrup or date syrup or whatever instead of honey, it's not going to be the same at all. Right. Okay. And that's why I really think that the analogy between cooking and baking You're absolutely right. and cooking and fermenting are applicable if you have dabbled in either of those things and perhaps you understand what I'm trying to convey but it's 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 much more of a science when it comes to baking oh, yeah, and it's fermenting chemistry. it's chemistry than with cooking cooking yep. you're just trying to to get the flavors right where baking and fermenting there's a little bit of science in there that you have to take into consideration by the way, I would like to say that the olive in my Pan Galactic Gargle Blaster was probably the best part of the Pan Galactic Gargle Blaster. Because you waited to the end. Did it absorb it some absorbed of the flavors? It absorbed some of the flavors. Oh, yeah, it was really see. good. I was going to share half of it with you, but I thought it would be awkward to it do It would that be on awkward camera. on camera, but. So, next time. I'm thinking about it. I, I, yeah. I think that was probably a beautiful thing. It, but. It, was, it was actually a really good olive. I still have little bits, you know, floating around in there. Anyway. So enough about substituting A for B. If you have questions, please, by all means, ask Absolutely. in the comments. I'm happy to try Absolutely. to help. We will not rewrite an entire recipe if so, uh, on demand that way. But if somebody asks, like, oh, how much sugar should I use instead of honey? Yeah, sure. I'll, I'll help you out with that. No yep. problem. Yep. Or, you know, like different things. I can do a little bit of research and look them up. Right. And if you have a recipe in mind, let us know and we can add it to the yeah, list. But we list. can't guarantee when that's going to be released because there's yeah. so many. And with that, thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye-bye.